Welcome everybody to our latest Department of History and Archaeology Research Seminar and uh, we've had a, a series of really interesting talks uh, on teams and um, uh, through from October and this is the first one of 2023 so Happy New Year everybody. Um, we'll be recording this for posterity on the University of Chester's uh, YouTube channel where we've got a dedicated playlist um, but the conversation today is going to be a bit different because rather than having a presentation we are having a conversation between myself and our guest uh, Dr Ellie Mackin Roberts and Ellie is a lecturer in classical art and archaeology at King's College London and has is a, a an eminent scholar who has produced a whole series of work on ancient Greek religion, material culture, and visual culture. Um, I'm, she'll be able to talk about that, so I won't do any more uh, exhausting and cringeworthy introduction. But hello, <laughs> Ellie. Nice to see you. Hello. Thank you for having me. And and I, I mean, this is a um, what my colleagues have been talking about a lot is different modes of digital public engagement. And I wanted an opportunity to talk with you uh, about your experience as someone who's really the sort of um, a trailblazer in, in multiple regards in this regard. I know that's not just about TikTok. I know you have you've been working on this and many other venues. And I hope we can provide that as context. But uh, if I may just say as a word of introduction, the, the, I want you to lead on a lot of this. So uh, but I, I won't leave you alone because I, 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 I hopefully we can have sort of a chat about various things. But I, I thought my, I suppose my thinking about why to have this now within this research seminar series is because um, so many of my colleagues across disciplines at the University of Chester have been discussing um, using social media. Uh, others don't at all, um, but particularly in the pandemic, I started using TikTok. I, I can't remember, we can, you know, I don't know exactly when you did, but, you know, the, the pandemic's part of this, but it's also part of a broader uh, both opportunity and challenge of how do we communicate our expertise to audiences beyond the academy via digital media. And um, I'm like you, I've had various feelings of optimism and pessimism with other social media channels. Yeah. And TikTok, at least, seems to be getting interaction. So um, that's why I thought we could focus on TikTok. But I, I wondered if you could give me your sense of the, the, the backstory of how you got into doing any of this social media um, work and what's so good or different about TikTok, do you feel? <laughs> Um, well, I also started doing TikTok in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I had been playing a lot of Hades, the video game. Um, I'm writing a book about Hades, and it forms one of the case studies um, for classical reception. Um, and so I, I really just sort of um, started kind of getting into reading about what people were saying about the game first on Reddit, and then that sort of led me to TikTok, um, where I then made a couple of videos about different aspects of Hades the Game, having written an academic monograph on underworld gods um, in ancient Greek religion and uh, cultural, the cultural landscape. And it just kind of went from there. I just kind of really enjoyed this short form, uh, really sort of rapid fire, way of engaging different publics. Um, you know, I know that different sorts of history and archaeology have different sorts of reputations. And I work in a classics department. I have three classics degrees. Classics is an exceptionally elitist and gatekeepy discipline. Um, and that a lot of that is changing. And I, you know, I feel really aware of the fact um, that because I work in uh, in a field that's very elitist, that's very kind of this, has this reputation, and in a department which is one of the top classics departments in the country, yes, yes. Uh, that which is very focused on engaging traditionally underrepresented students, um, I, d I don't, I didn't kind of feel like, the work that was being done on Twitter and those sorts of other social media sites was actually kind of cutting through to the 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 people that we want to be engaging with, which is not only students from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds, which obviously is about the health of the discipline um, and all of that sort of stuff, uh, but also just a general public who are engaged in the ancient world, in archaeology, in ancient history, and are tend to be like actually very receptive to 
learning about new research um that you know it it can be very easy to think that you must find this as well Howard with the Vikings that people think because they've watched you know in my case Mary Beard or Michael Scott and the BBC that all of these things are settled and I think they get very excited about learning that a lot of these debates aren't settled and they are ongoing and there is new material and new evidence coming out um, and new ways of approaching that evidence. Um, And I think that gets people really excited and that kind of is what kept me on TikTok, that engagement that I was getting from like normal people, normal people that I never would have reached otherwise. I mean, I felt that, too, that a lot of other social media activities, I I mean, I I have presence on other um, social media platforms, but um, I did my blog from 2013. So coming up to nine and a half years of blogging and then sharing that through Facebook and Twitter mainly, although I've I've had various stop starts with Instagram and and I tried Tumblr and no, that was was a desert for me. I couldn't find anything. And and I haven't done anything on Reddit or anything like I haven't even engaged on that. But, you know, we have our different platforms, but I found there was so all I got was grief from certain other platforms or or people who already know the stuff and are agreeing with me. And while there are general publics out there, I think there's a good 20, 30 people on Twitter who are not academics, professionals who interact at some point. Twitter, a uh, TikTok seemed was very quickly a different world. I, I, I found the, the nature of the algorithm, while a curse and that we curse it all the time about how some things go you know, far and other things we put a lot of effort into just disappear into no way. It's incredibly yeah. frustrating, but people are liking and commenting and asking genuine questions. And yes, it the general public context means you are dealing with some very crazy ideas, some quite dangerous and pernicious ideas at some points, but there's a lot of people who are genuinely informed at different degrees who are asking questions. And yeah, I find it really constructive in that sense yeah i mean so i mean could you give perhaps uh, some of the people who you know are watching this who don't have never done anything on in terms of video social media what what you do just to just give us an introduction to what the the practicalities of what kinds of videos you record because a lot of people dance and lip sync and do all sorts of crazy things you're much more you know (laughs) talking to camera (laughs) what's your what's your style (laughs) Um, So I suppose I have kind of three different ways that I approach making videos. The first are, and I script most of my videos and then have them on a teleprompter. Um, So I use a teleprompter app. I don't always stick to the script, but, you know, it helps um, to kind of keep on track and to limit the amount of editing that I then have to do. So... I kind of come up with ideas in three sort of different ways. The first are when I'm doing teaching prep um, and come across like interesting case studies or after classes if my students have particularly engaged with like a pot or a piece of sculpture that I might then go and kind of make a more extended, you know, analysis of that one object. the other kind of type is where a, sim- a similar sort of thing, but in my own research, when I kind of come across things that I get really excited about or whatever, and I will kind of make a, a video about that. Um, and that can ca- happen at, at different points of the research process, either really early on um, or actually very late, you know, in the kind of editing and when I think, oh, actually, this might make a really nice video. Um, And the other one is sort of responses, um, whether that's responses to comments or other people's videos um, or just like, you know, one of my students or someone has kind of said to me, hey, I'm really interested in this, you know, maybe you can make a video about it. Um, And then very recently I kind of did uh, a couple of videos, only one of which I've actually posted as of yet. Um, about my actual research process. Yes. Uh, so I posted I a video of going um, to see the sculptures in the British Museum that I had yeah. identified on a plan for uh, a publication that I'm working on, um, or a, a manuscript, I should say, that I'm working on. Um, 
so yeah, they're sort of the main types and mainly I do script my videos. Um, I think it helps me to be more precise and more succinct um, to do it that way. I know that not everybody does. And it also cuts down on the time that I spend recording and re-recording. And like I like you, Howard, I do this in addition to my full-time workload. Like this is not accounted for in my workload model. No, of course not. So, <laughs> you know, anything that I can do to kind of replicate work, um, so with teaching prep or with research into to TikTok, um, or to kind of cut down the amount of time that I have to spend on recording uh, or editing, um, doing all the captions and all that sort of stuff. It is a time consuming process, isn't it? I, I, I did. I kind of guessed you did some kind of teleprompting because you're you're really fast and articulate and clear in a way that only a few people are on. And I go, God, that's so good. How did you pack so much in? And, you know, I, I kind of guessed you had a you know, put I mean, you put a lot of time. It's a lot of and people need to know this. It's yeah. a lot of time. And I, while I don't do that, there have been hours that have gone by where a video has suddenly been uploading and disappeared off my phone. There's been some tech issue or and, and it just hasn't even saved to drafts. And I, you know, you sort of, you know, cry yeah. into a cup of tea or whatever other drink is available. So there's all manner of technical issues. Um, but it's it's time of thinking through planning. What do you want to do content about? How are you going to do it? And uh, and you've also, if I can add to the things you've said about you, I've also I don't know if you've done it recently. You've done walk and talks as well, haven't you? You've done you've you've done sort of out and about less formal content where you're reflecting on things. Yeah. So I used to do a lot more of that, particularly last year. I was only working part time. Um, I had uh, coming back off maternity leave, I decided not to go full time um, in in that first year. Um, and so I used to do a lot of kind of on the fly, you know, as I was walking around the park with my daughter in the pram and stuff like that. Um, and I don't do as much of that now because I just don't have as much time no. during the day walking around the park as I used to. Um, but I've also, I think, started, I do a lot more, well, not a lot, but much more than I used to kind of off brand content, yeah, um, yeah. particularly around things like the UCU strikes uh, and other kind of political things going on, um, because I don't feel that I can divorce my identity, my political views from my identity as an educator um, and as a person who kind of lives within UKHE. Um, and as an immigrant who has decided to make the UK my home. Um, and, you know, those things, I think, inform my academic practice in a way that that I can't kind of divorce from. Yeah. I think so that's really I important. do a bit more of that. I think that's really important, though, isn't it? Is And I think I've heard from other creators that they like, if, if you're doing like 100 videos over, a, you know, 200 days or 150 days that are just straight up. Let's talk about this issue. Let's talk about... They do like to see something of the 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 behind the scenes. They like to know something about you. You don't have obviously we have to be very careful about how much we talk about our personal lives, and that's our own decisions about how we frame that. But my point is, I think there is our audience generally do like some sense of okay, I'm going into work now, and I'm going to be teaching this. And by by the way, I, I, I'm working on here's a site I'm visiting on a day off. Uh, but you know, um, you're much more formal than I am. I, I'm very eclectic. I'm all over the show. But but uh, um, but equally, I think they there is an appeal to that, and I think whether it's political or social or I'm going to step and, and, and I've seen other creators do this whole okay I'm I, I, okay guys I'm stepping outside of my usual content and I'll now be talking about this piece of 19th century architecture I happen to see because this yeah. actually is really relevant to something else I'm interested in and so I don't think that's the end of the world and I think that's good actually but but yeah. I, I know what you mean uh, um, some people are perhaps really straight up and they don't include any of that and it's just I'm going to now talk about another but you've also done some wonderful series and your Advent series on Greek pottery. And that's why I wanted to talk to you because you, you're dealing with material culture, you're dealing yes. with art, you know, and you had a, a pot per day, wasn't it? For like how many? Yes. So I did um, 24 from the 1st to the 24th every day spoke about uh, a pot, um, except for one day in which I spoke about um, uh, uh black groundware which is essentially like 
all pots that aren't decorated, like normal everyday pots that tend to just be black slipped um, and are just the regular pots that people have in their homes. And they, I don't think, get enough love because everybody wants to see, like, the big, flashy, painted, you know, panathenate prize amphorae. Um, that was... I wish I had planned that series slightly better. Um, and I think I will do something similar again um, and make it much more planned in advance because um, I knew pretty much all the pots that I wanted to talk about roughly, um, but I was sort of making them uh, only a day in advance. Uh, and I kind of wish that I had filmed them all in advance and then wasn't kind of on Christmas Eve in my parents-in-law's, you know, living room, <laughs> like filming about a pot. Um, but I really enjoyed doing that series. I really love... Uh, you know, coming from a very hard classics background um, and working in a classics department um, now, and I used to work uh, in the archaeology department at the University of Leicester, so I kind of have that that more uh, grounded archaeology department kind of um, dirty experience, if I kind of may say, you know, yeah. you know what I mean. Yes. Um, and it I really struggle sometimes to articulate my identity as a, a ancient historian who works on material culture and is predominantly about material culture um, in my research and definitely in my teaching uh, with kind of the classics part of that. Um, and I think that's also one of the reasons that TikTok is great because, you know, you can do here's one thing, one pot, it's incredible and this is why, and come back tomorrow and I'll talk to you about another pot. Um, so, yeah. So in one to three minutes, we can go longer up to ten minutes for people who don't know, but most people go for one to three minutes. You 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 know, I think a lot of people feel frozen by fear. They've got to try and pack everything in. But if you create a series, which you can link to a playlist, or you just simply say, well, here's an example. Yeah. Here's seven books. You've also do these wonderful, like, here's 18 books. <laughs> I, I, I love those where you do sort of, here's five books that are on this. And you you also, and, and, and also I love the ones where you went to the Parthenon itself, didn't you? You actually went to Athens and you yeah. you, you took us around, you know. on do you, uh, One of the things I wanted to ask about that is, because I, um, I've tried to do, like site, I do a lot of site visit ones, but no one cares. I can literally show evidence of the first ever, whatever it may be, pyramid or the the most unique ever medieval castle, and everyone. It's a really low interaction because they like it's it, it's seeing you doing it is what they yeah. people like. Um, do you, what was your reaction to the different styles you've adopted? What works and what hasn't worked in terms of uh, of being out and about versus in a museum versus but with a bookcase. <laughs> um, I think the in general, the ones that do the worst for me are the ones in museums. Right. That's interesting. Which, I don't know, like, sometimes I get really frustrated because they seem to do really well for other people. Yeah. And people sort of saying, hey, an object, and literally that's it. And they yeah. get, get millions of views, you know. Or, <laughs> and you're like, but, ah. Oh. Um, <laughs> The, when I was in when I was in Athens well, a year and a half ago, I was on a research trip, and it was a really frustrating experience because I had this money to go on this research trip. I couldn't because of the pandemic. Suddenly, I could. I had to take my infant because otherwise I couldn't go. So I had to cut down a lot of what I was going to do. Yeah. Um, and so I decided to to make these sort of on site videos, um, and I really just did them on the fly. I didn't plan them at all. They were just like, oh yeah, this is a thing that I'm kind of have just read the plaque on and and here we go. Or, oh, you know, particularly things around like the tholos and stuff in the amphora, um, not the amphora, the agora, um, which actually in hindsight, that makes a terrible video because there's nothing there. Like, you know, there's a mark on the ground that if you know what you're looking at, you know what it is, but otherwise. Um, but I'm actually going back to Athens next year, 
not on a research trip, but I will be doing some sneaky research on the side, um, but on a holiday. Uh, and I am going to do some of those videos again in a much more kind of planned and thoughtful way. Um, and so I think it'll be interesting to see the difference between these kind of ad hoc videos and the planned videos and how well they do. Um, but I do think the ones that do the best are the ones where I'm standing in front of the bookcase in the office and, you know, just putting up pictures um, of things. Also, I think because when you video stuff in a museum, even on site, it the, the image is not as good as if no. you download a high res image from the museum website or whatever and put it in the background. So I think it's also about like who get how people see the images. I think a lot unless you're doing one of these, unless you've got those professional setups, which, you know, you actually can produce like quality, you know, visuals of sites. Um, which I don't. I mean, I must. I'm just so enthusiastic when I go to a site, and I want to go. Oh God, look, Ridge and Furrow, folks, and you sort of empty. The, you know, everyone else is just going to see a field, Howard, or Hill Fort. It's just amazing. Look at this, and everyone's just going. It's just a bump. You know, no. no one's I love you. your videos when you're <laughs> at like out and about, and you're like, here's a dike. I think those are great. <laughs> but you know what I mean in the sense that I don't think many of these sites look as good as in my mind and on the ground they are they on the camera they're not going to translate in the way and the you know um I, I always feel the sense of you know well for me it was cool but obviously everyone but i have that on student field trips sometimes as yeah. well many a student field trip i've gone well, look at this everyone and they go oh, well. yeah <laughs> but you know yeah, yeah. i think that's the that's the problem of sites and unless you've got that ability to which i don't have of capturing high quality visuals and because it's not poor, it's not landscape view you've got a portrait style of tiktok yeah. video or reels or all these are uh, a portrait you're not going to be able to capture a landscape in a in a or a, a monument but anyway yeah I, i'm just interested in that and what do you i was wondering also about how in terms of the different styles of video you've tried have, has anything gone better than you thought or anything flopped in a way that really annoyed you in terms of you know your expectations uh... um i think the videos that i know will do well are videos where i talk about greek mythology right. and that frustrates me because that's kind of the least interesting part of what i do i think um, but it also brings a, a, a bigger audience in yeah. and, and, you know, so sometimes you have to make those trade-offs, um, the things that you are pretty sure are going to do well. Um, videos where I talk about Hades and Persephone yeah. always either go really well with really high engagement or nothing. And I can't, I don't understand why one goes well and one doesn't, no. I, you know. Um, sometimes I get really frustrated by uh, how poorly videos about sculpture do in comparison to pots. That's um, yeah, I thought which, the other way around. Yeah. yeah, I kind of did too, but all, like generally across the board, um sculpture does worse than pots do you think it's because people do you think i mean i'm interested i just thought of this i haven't really th planned question at all but i wonder whether is a lot of it is is tiktok is a bit in subversive in that people know what is the classic standard content and they're they they attracted to the things they know are a little humble a little less glitzy a little less standard yeah. do you think that's true or is that me just hope being hopeful that people get that <laughs> i don't know i mean it's certainly an interesting i think i mean there's i think something about the way that the images translate like black and red figure imagery is very easy to see on a screen even if the image is not but like the subtleties of a damaged sculpture hmm. are sometimes not as easy like they don't translate as well onto the screen yeah. um and again you know this comes back to like what can you do with the camera on an iphone right yeah um and so that's sometimes a bit frustrating 
But then the other thing is, we talked about visuals and objects a lot, but I think before we go on to sort of perhaps the next section of discussing positives and real negatives, I, 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 you actually pack in some really complex conceptual material, you know, academic ideas. And I think that's important for um, viewers to, to, to appreciate is that when I watch your videos, you, you, you do that. Here's an object and it dates to the fifth century BCE and it does this and it's from here. And this would have been used in this context. But you're also doing sort of how do we understand the society? How do we understand sexuality? How do we understand religion? And how do we understand ritual practice? Or you know, I'm, I'm putting those ideas yes. just, but those are kind. You, you do. So, uh, do you find that stuff puts people off? Or because I don't get a sense that's true. I think people are lapping up the more nuanced, complex yeah. takes. I absolutely think that people want more nuanced takes, um, and I think that that's evident by like I don't know what your metrics are like, but my two to three minute videos tend to do better yeah. than my one to two minute videos because you can kind of put more in and I tend to go wide to small. So, you know, always start with like, this is what this is. This is when it's from, this is what it shows. And here's a whole pile of interesting stuff about it and how it relates to other things. Um, and then perhaps, you know, I'm going to link a video that talks about a different aspect of this. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the great things about TikTok over something like Instagram Reels is that you can link videos together yeah. by either playlists or by actually linking the video in the description um, yeah. to give people more context about things. Yeah. And they definitely want it. And these are not like a an academic audience. This is a general lay audience. And they absolutely want detail and nuance and academic ideas um you know i ve i very rarely get pushback about how complex no, um no. things are sometimes i get like what does this word mean uh you know but not but in good faith as long as we're, i mean i think within the within with the proviso that we're not deliberately creating jargon we're using common language that people can understand and yeah, I get, I get, I do get comments that, you know, people have watched the first five seconds. I've said, you know, were the Vikings really all evil? And someone's going, yes, no, yes, no, because they've literally heard the, I, don't, I haven't used a video saying that, but, you know, something really silly. And then I've explained, most people will, are, and look, obviously there are going to be people who are not going to understand the yeah. framings of anything, but a lot of people are really tackling. They understand the debates. They understand issues about social justice, about race, equality. They're interested in 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 that nuance about sexuality. They're not there just to hear their own opinions pushed back on. And they are obviously there are topics that are going to attract attention and identity politics and yeah. identity issues are going to be, but often in a constructive way. And yes, you will get occasional lunatics, but a lot of the time I'm finding a lot of that material is reaching people and challenging people. And so, yeah, I think there's a lot of positive about that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I also I wonder, though, there are videos where I think people latch on to a section of what one sentence, not even a full <laughs> sentence. And they're, yeah. they're fixating over that. And I obviously that's a well, can be see a failing of me that I've made a mistake and they're all obsessed with that rather than the actual narrative. But, you know, th sometimes it's unpredictable, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what, sure. In terms of the broader, then you've been doing this for two, two and a half years now. Um, yeah, around that. So what would you say are the takeaway positives of being a, a TikToker? <laughs> if, if that, um, oh, God, did I use that phrase? I used a TikToker, TikToker, yeah. <laughs> <You're a> TikToker. <laughs> um, I've done it now. <laughs> I, I mean, broadly, as we've sort of already discussed, I think the biggest positive from um, my perspective is being able to engage directly engage with an audience that would never normally like see my work, see my research, yeah. and in a lot of cases would never normally be exposed to a university level yeah. classical art and archaeology idea, concept, something and particularly and you know I don't sort of want to get into like the the BS of university rankings but from one of the top classics departments in the country and realistically in the world um you know we as uh, our president loves to say we won the ref in classics um <laughs> won the ref my way <laughs> No comment. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, but, you know, 
this is it is a big deal and I do get That's good. Yeah. you know I get a lot of um, DMs and emails from students uh, who want to go into classics who have who their schools have no classics or archaeology or um, you know pathways into these humanities degrees um, at GCSE or A level um, and being able to kind of you know, give those people something to talk about in their personal statements is really, you know, heartening um, for me as an academic, as someone who cares deeply about my discipline and the health of my discipline um, and the health of the humanities more broadly yeah, um, yeah. in UK higher education and global higher education. Um, so that, I think, is the biggest positive for me. That's really great. That's, I mean, I, 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 I sort of see it in the similar way, in the sense that I am reaching, I'm clearly reaching different audiences, and I think there's a, you know, a, a sense of responsibility of public engagement, and also, uh, but I also have to say more selfishly, I find it fun, and I also find it actually testing, it's testing me, to address subjects I wouldn't normally address. I address them maybe in a group of students, but I know it's not going anywhere. But to yeah. push myself to read the latest articles that I wouldn't, I'd put, probably put on the back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that next year when I'm working on that issue. So it's forcing me to engage with my academic discipline in a, I think in a way that perhaps I'm ashamed to say I sometimes shy or away, away from, but also to try to communicate. So I'm training on, on it. So I, I, I must admit, I don't know if that's more selfish or more in, introvert, but certainly more, you know, I'm, I'm gaining something from that as well as, I'm sharing some pre-existing stuff I would have done anyway. Uh, so I feel it's pushing me in different yeah. ways, and, uh, which I find positive. Um, but what, what, I mean, what would you say about more negative or less sh less shiny positive? <laughs> you know, I don't know how you want to frame it. Uh, um, you... I mean, just very quickly to go back to the positives, I do find it fun. I wouldn't <laughs> do it if it wasn't fun, you know. Um, yeah, sure. Negatives. I mean, I, I think... I had become a little bit um, complacent, I guess, or or mm, not complacent, um, desensitised um, to some of the more negative aspects. And it wasn't until I was uh, having a conversation with my husband in which I casually mentioned that I have comment moderated uh, both my daughter's names, the road that we live in, and my postcode. Um, and he was like, why would you do that? Like, because if people comment them, it won't, it will go through to moderate, like they won't be posted. And that his reaction to that did kind of like bring me back to, you know, um, particularly when I set these up, I'd made a series of videos about um, the very, very problematic racist colonialist her past that classics as a discipline yeah. has. Um, it ended up on libs of TikTok and, you know, it could have been a lot worse. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, as they say, I definitely ended up on the wrong side of TikTok um, and have done a couple of times. Yeah. Um, so that, I guess, I mean, is a massive negative. Um, I don't get that bothered by, like, the mansplaining and the people who come up in my comments and are like, you know, you're wrong about whatever. Um, or you're not a very good historian, or I'd never take a class with you. Um, and I kind of like, well, if you came and worked in my department, like if you were a student in my department, then you wouldn't have a choice. You'd take classes <laughs> with me or you'd leave. Like yeah. you don't have to watch my videos. Um, so I have a kind of very purposefully cultivated a an attitude of ambivalence towards people who actively don't like me um, online and especially on TikTok. I find it much worse on TikTok than on any other social media. Um, so, yeah, that is, I guess, the biggest negative. How does that play out with the, um, I mean, there's a blessing of TikTok is also there's a community of creators and the ability to duet and stitch. 
Um, and I've done that sometimes, but I'm aware it's a, it feels a bit intrusive. And I always feel I'm a bit stepping on toes by t stitching someone and saying, this is a really good point. However, the, because sometimes I've done some quite robust responses. Uh, but I mean, do you, do, do you engage with any of that or do you find that uh, just a distraction? Um, I don't do a lot of stitching and duets. Um, though I'm, uh, I have no problem when people do kind of stitch my things and say, oh, this is a really good point and also. Um, yeah. And that is definitely the kind of stitching that I do when I do do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, like trying to positively, you know, add to the yeah. Yeah. community of uh, archaeologists and historians that we have on TikTok, um, and but I don't do a lot of that. No. Um, you know, I know that there are uh, amazing creators who kind of that's their bread and butter, yeah. um, but that's I just you know. I've got mine on uh, friends only, so people can't stitch and duet me. They can obviously download the video and do a hand stitch. Yeah. Uh, and, and and but I've actually because I'm a bit nervous about that whole thing. Is I I'm a bit control freaky. I I don't mind occasionally control you know responding to others in comments and and occasional stitches where I feel comfortable they won't mind. But apart from breaking that mold once or twice where I've got angry at certain extremely ob ob obnoxious videos where I felt. Because you know, I felt I had to say something, but most of the yeah. time, it's a very, I, 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 I can't. I don't want to have people just duetting and going. Well, he may say this, but you know, I can't deal with the drama of that. So I've kind of, I've got my own controls on that. But yeah. I, inevitably, people are going to take umbrage at something I've said and do videos about me. And I've seen accidentally videos about me going, Arr! you know. But at the end of the day, I've put myself out there. If people are going to disagree with things. That that's fine. Uh, but yes, I agree with you. I think that's not the main focus, is it? It's it's more broadcast. But there is a conversation. It's broadcast, but with conversation because you're responding to what people say. But you can't yeah. respond to every comment or react to every every crazy person out there because it will no. never end. Um, I mean, what what are your plans for the future, Ellie? Because you know, you're up to what are you now? I mean, I don't know how. I, I don't even know what followers numbers mean anymore because TikTok is so vast compared with other platforms but you're yeah. I, I just checked you're at 46,000 plus followers which is like much more I don't know what your other social media but that must be in many times more than what you and others are followed on by in academic circles on other accounts I mean yeah how do you cope with that fa that's fame that is fame isn't it <laughs> I mean <laughs> well I, I, when I just after I hit 30,000 um Someone, I can't remember who it was, said to me, you know that um, according to the British government, if you have over 30,000 followers on a single social media channel, you are technically a celebrity. Um, <laughs> and I was like, that's are you? amazing. Hey, there you are. It's, it's, <laughs> someone said it. It must be true. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't that's look great. into the claim. Um, but it's, you know, I think... <laughs> The algorithm, uh, as you know, you're aware. Anybody who's kind of looked at TikTok is aware, is a fickle and uh, harsh mistress. Um, and I have really stopped paying a lot of attention to um, my views and care more about the actual engagement. So comments, saves, and likes over views. Um, and I make content that I think my students are going to like. I make content that I think, you know, people in my professional circles will like. Um, and I make content that I am passionate about. Um, and I'm lucky enough that having those three things in mind also is what a, a broader public want to engage with. Um, and I think even if you know, I like I've stagnated uh, a little bit. It, sort of, I I got up to thirty thousand very quickly, and then it's been kind of a very low, uh, long, hard slog, I suppose. Um, getting up from there, um, what I, you know, it's what, like, would I like to have fifty thousand, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million followers? Of course, I would. That would be amazing. You know. Apart from anything else, that's a ref impact statement that writes itself. Yeah. But I'm I'm not that hung up on the number. I just 
you know, when it stops being fun, when I stop enjoying the engagement with the community, both of academics and of the general public, I'll stop doing it. That's a really interesting point because I found that that I, I've people say, well, you know, you, you, this, you, I've had some good friends say to me about strategy. Yeah, you need to strategize this. And I think if I make it all about strategy of attracting attention, the content will become so clickbaity. I, I, I've seen ways I could do it. Some things are outside of my capabilities. Um, I only have certain a certain sense of humor. I have a certain appearance. There's certain things I can't achieve. Um, a certain you know singing skills that no one wants to hear. But my point would be that. <laughs> You know, there are things I could do. I've seen the routes to getting higher figures if I wanted to go down those routes yeah. and I've decided no. So it's all for, like there's a lot of select self-selection and you have to have integrity with what you want to achieve. Um, so I don't, ha you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keep thinking about this myself, about, you know, the things I think every time I try and plan something, it doesn't work out in terms of any planning of like, yeah. I want to do a video series on this. This will definitely hit a radar. And I did a series on the archaeology of the Mandalorian Star Wars series. And I enjoyed it. I had integrity, but I knew I could have done that differently. And the views tanked. I had hardly, I mean, it was OK, but it yeah. wasn't a hit. Whereas I can do something else I think will go nowhere. And it's suddenly, oh, everyone's watching. So I, yeah. I kind of, I think overthinking it is a problem for me. Um, I, I know it, I've got the ability to do a slightly different product. But I, oh, you know, but um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It, yeah. I, I think we've got to have the, the points you've made, I think, are the key ones, isn't it? Is that would colleagues be interested? Would students be interested? And I can't remember what the first thing you said, but you know, does it have, you know, does it have, is it something you want to do? I think it has yeah. to be the, the bottom line, doesn't it? And also, I mean, as you say, like creating content with integrity, like none of the things that I put on my TikTok are things that I wouldn't say to my colleagues and my students. Like, I feel that I have a responsibility as an academic who is presenting myself in my professional persona yeah. to be true to the evidence that's there, to not over-sensationalise. Yeah. Like, you know, and you could very easily, like super easily make very sensationalised things. Um, and, you know, I know that there are content creators who do that, like... Um, like Mini Minuteman, who does all those debunking uh, of pseudo pseudo archaeology videos, and they're very good, yeah. but he's not a professional archaeologist or academic, and I think that makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, you know, this is fun. It is something I enjoy doing, but it is also something that I do in my professional persona. Um, and so I think, yeah, posting with integrity as well is very important. So in terms of moving forward, you're going to keep doing what you're doing, planning, but not over planning, you know, trying to, you know, trying to keep keep that momentum going, because a lot of TikTok is about momentum, isn't it? Yeah. Of, of, of keep, uh, but you've got no specific plans to start doing tap dancing or, uh, you know, or other, some other some other style of video. It's more, you know, you've got your style, you've got your 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 content. Your yeah, content. I think my base niche is is pretty much there. I have started doing a couple more and thinking more about doing like some study skills um, videos. I made a video this morning uh, about how to email for a letter of reference. Um, just things that like my personal duties, my undergraduates are coming to me and saying, like, how do I do this thing? Um, and that, you know, new PhD students and research master's students are thinking about, like, how do I get started actually planning my research or, you know, those sorts of things. Um, but I think that's more about making them and having them up there and then being able to, when I have a student say, like, what should I do? Be like, here, just watch this video. Because yeah, that yeah. also makes my life easier and hopefully, you know, it might be. Um, but I'm just going to kind of keep doing stuff based on the classes I'm teaching um, and the research that I'm doing and stuff that I'm interested in. Because I think if I plan too far in advance, then... I'm not going to want to make the videos that I yeah, planned. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. something else will come up or, you know, and I think part of like what I do is about the enthusiasm that I have yeah. for the material that I talk about.
And no one else, I mean, this is the thing, at the end of the day, there aren't that many ancient historians, historians or archaeologists doing this effectively. There's a, there's a whole, whole tranche of modern historians talking about very pertinent recent history issues. Yeah. And then there are the history bros doing their, let's look at Wikipedia and talk about something for a minute. And, yeah. and th but there are, in terms of actual academic history, a lot of modern history, very little medieval history and ancient history, I feel. And archaeology, likewise, there's people doing the debunking, there's people, but there's 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 a small market and you've already got your niche so in the hypothetical world where another hundred classes start pouring out content like this you're still going to have integrity because you're doing your thing I, and yeah. I, I feel that's what i like to reflect on yes i'm doing a few general videos like what happened in the you know but i'm not doing this gcse level content or uh de, you know debunking the the ancient aliens fanatics i you know I, I'm, I'm there's still a and the other thing i find i i don't know if you do this at all but i embed a lot on my TikToks now in my WordPress blog, because if I'm going to a site, I'm doing a report, I can actually just drop in the videos so yes. that, because um, WordPress allows that now. So I'm finding that's one of my other rationales for doing it is that it's it's another video enhancement of my existing content that I've been doing for nine and a half years on. But, but you know, I think, yeah, instead it's slow and steady or you know, yeah. rapid, you know is, is the way forward and see what happens really but at the end of the day without any commitment to us doing this in terms of professional involvement you know I think the end of the day it has to be a would we'll take what comes rather than you know uh, an obligation to continue doing these things that's my feeling about it I don't know about how you, how you feel <laughs> yeah absolutely I mean there are things that I think you know oh this might be you know, I sort of briefly think that when I'm in Athens in April, I'll film some stuff and not post it until kind of July, August, around when the Panathenaea would have been and, and you know, like that sort of stuff. Um, but I just also my brain just doesn't work in a way that can can plan too far in advance um, or make content that I'm not immediately enthusiastic about making. I think that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a planning, but not too much planning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can make well, the, I mean, I, I think I've covered all of the things I really wanted to ask you about, you know, the positive, the, the strategies, the positive, the negative, the plans of the future. I mean, do, are you is there anything else you'd like to discuss before we hand over to Q&A and see if there's anyone's got any questions for you or me or us? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I think we've like pretty well covered a lot of things. I think one more thing that, you know, we haven't talked a lot about is the community of fellow creators um, that there is uh, amongst archaeologists, ancient historians, modern historians. Um, and that, I think, has been very valuable oh. to me, um, not just because, you know, sometimes it when you're having an issue with like TikTok itself or with making content, it's easy to just throw up a friends only video to mutuals to say, are your views also trash at the moment? Um, and so, yeah, I, re I do really value the community of content creators within sort of broadly history and archaeology that I have managed to kind of you know, find. And I, I found that really valuable because, I mean, there's people there that I'm sure on other social media platforms, I wouldn't be interested in their content, but the style of content, I'm, I'm a consumer of this. Again, I'm using these words, product and consumer. Anyway, yeah. I am a listener. I'm, a, I'm on TikTok watching and learning a lot. Yeah. I've learned a lot of educational content, but also individuals that, you know, from different regions of the world, different ethnic backgrounds, genders, identities that I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with on other social media platforms. I am aware that there are student creators on there and some very good ones. And I try to not be, you know, on that, you know, in their comments or anything, leave them space to do their thing. Yeah. Uh, and I'm aware of that. But even there, there's a lot of mutual respects and camaraderie and, and, and yeah, technical issues. That I wouldn't have thought, are you finding that a lot of people are saying this talk, you know, hard right talking point and where, where's that come oh yeah that's a standard point and that's from QAnon or and I yeah. don't know a lot of that so I get a lot of help 
knowing why people are using these silly rhetorical tactics you know yeah. so yeah I, I think that's really really important and uh, yeah there's not enough of us but there are uh, there is a substantial number of people doing really exciting things i'm learning a heck of a lot about you know ancient ancient <laughs> the ancient uh, uh, you know mediterranean for example but not only just that you know lots of other things as well yeah. it's a uh, um, it's a new world i'm i'm you never stop learning even at my age <laughs> you know? indeed 